You already know what we're listening to. Yes. Fire. Fuego. Heat. Bus. Music. It is bright. That motherfucker. So, gonna go to the gym. Gonna go hit a volume chest workout. Get some clips of that. Put some nice music over it. Um, yeah, it'll be a, a little fun activity to do. Uh, yeah, I don't really have that much planned out for this video, but today we're gonna record. I know that's gonna be a fact. We've got our pretty right here. Concoction. We've got one scoop Gorilla Mode, two scoop Gorilla Nitric, and then one scoop EAAs. Get down the hatch. Honestly, I can tell you, mouth-watering watermelon definitely takes a cake for top three flavors. My personal favorite is Bombsicle, but that could just be a preference of mine. I don't know. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. Um, I will say, uh, I wish they had an unflavored uh, form, at least. Like, sometimes I just want to grow with nitric. Not have any flavors, but anyways, that's just me. Let's get to this gym workout. Here's another training video. If you cannot see already, it is golden hour. Just look at that. So, today we're gonna be doing some odd lifts. Uh, probably gonna do, so I'm gonna be doing some Steinborn front squats as well as maybe some snatch overhead press. Uh, I'm not too excited about the whole strength aspect today. Um, didn't eat as much as I'd like to. Next time I would definitely like to eat a lot more food before I come into the gym, but you know what, today we're just gonna get this training in and see what this session gives us. So, catch you inside the gym. What is going on, you guys? So, I decided to not put any music over this uh, bench session because I wanted to kind of talk about more uh, technical aspects and go more in depth into what I do for setting up for my bench and uh, how do I achieve such a, uh, a higher total because one of my goals this this year is to bench 315 uh, and currently at 160 pounds I was able to bench 275 pounds uh, five weeks out from my first bodybuilding show which kind of gave me an in-depth look of if I continued down a strength focused path I could probably achieve such numbers as 315 on a flat bench uh, right here you see I was doing 154 pounds or 70 kg uh, for some warm-up reps. Now usually I do use uh, a resistance band to kind of train my rotator cuffs and warm them up while I do my uh, while I do my other warm-ups for let's say my chest and triceps. I also focus more on my lats to build more of a stable base when I try to pin my upper back to the bench pad itself. Now we're moving on to a set of 198 pounds or 90 kg for other people that use kg. My 
funny enough, myself, I'm trying to learn to use more calibrated plates or uh, kg measured plates because in my gym, it, my gym specifically has a lot of options for weights in terms of bumper plates, rubberized plates, or calibrated weight plates as you see on the bar right now. Um, just as more of a powerlifting centric gym, I feel I should be able to use more of the weights at my disposal because most of the time you see uh, the guy on my left, he is using uh, rubberized weighted plates for his squat, which he could very well use calibrated kg plates, but sometimes it's just easier to add on a 45 plate and you know it's 315 for three plates versus a uh, going in for a red, blue, and whatever rainbow color you decide to put on the bar. But other than that, you saw that previous set was pretty decent. Uh, once I'm able to use my leg drive properly and I get a good arch on my bench, I feel a lot stronger and a lot more stable when I decide to uh, go for a heavy one rep max or a top set of three. As you see here, I believe this was a top set of four, which I was hoping to get maybe around five reps. But in my recent, tra recent training experience, I have found that I haven't been able to replicate a lot of heavyweight uh, sets or I just have not been able to implement those. Uh, although very beneficial for strength and muscle building purposes, I feel that uh, I'm going to need to uh, start practicing more of those or start programming a lot more of those top heavy sets for multiple sets. Because doing those repetitions over time, especially increasing weight by 2.5 pounds maybe every two weeks or maybe every one week if you're very uh, hyper recuperative, like you can recover from your workouts very fast. Uh, for me specifically, because of my job, it impedes on my recovery and it's not a very consistent training schedule. I try to get as much work in as I can and I tend to slightly overdo it a bit when I come into the gym just because I feel like I have to make up for lost time, which in reality I should just kind of take a slower approach to gaining strength. Now we're going to be backing off by another 10 kg on this set, no lift off this time, which I find lift offs to be very beneficial for uh, just keeping your same rack and unrack position uh, constant so you're able to focus 100% on your lift and not having to focus on taking that weight off your shoulders to press the weight out of the rack and then over your sternum. So for this set, I think I got a around maybe 5 or 6 reps. Uh, by myself. Uh, although this is, I believe, 220 pounds, still felt very difficult trying to get this up, uh, especially because my leg drive and arch were compromised. Uh, I definitely feel myself uh, declining on a stability and a technical aspect as soon as I get fatigued. When I am not fatigued, I feel just a lot better in my uh, technique and leg drive specifically just because it could be something to do with a fresh lower back or it could just be that I psych myself out since the weights get heavier and I have to uh, accommodate for that new load. Anyways, we're going to go over to some Larson presses now that we uh, got done with our strength focused work. I decided to go down and wait and do a lot more uh, high volume work with uh, no leg drive which I find for Larson press, uh, specifically on a bench press or maybe an incline press, helps a lot with contracting and isolating the front delts, lats, and striatus, as well as the pecs. Because when you have no leg drive, you really have to recruit those muscle groups that are being used to stabilize and thus get you out of that bottom, like, boneyard area of the bench. I've found that doing these, as well as pause reps, have significantly increased my uh, workload and my stability aspect for a heavyweight single bench. Uh, these are some things that I'm going to try to implement more often for my training for a 315 bench by the end of the year. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to record a lot more sessions like this where I can kind of go over and break down my technical form and see what I add in throughout the weeks to see if this helps. But as you see from this form, uh, this form, this video, I'm doing another uh, set with another 20 kg on top of that which was one of my previous sets with leg drive and you can see that my strength is nearly at the same without leg drive as with leg drive now this could be just a flaw that my leg drive is not specifically 
good. I haven't mastered the technique for it. By far, I've not mastered the technique for it. But other than that, I felt like I was doing pretty well uh, considering my strength levels are still very high for a Larson press, which is no leg drive. Anyways, we're gonna come over to the overhead squat. So dealing with the overhead press squat is, I would consider it more to be a CrossFit move, but nowadays I don't really, I mean, I'll be honest, I've never done CrossFit in my life, so I don't know much about the technique, nor do I know much about the benefits of it. But what I found just playing around with uh, snatching weight over my head or doing snatch deadlifts was that the core and lats were worked a lot as well as the stability aspect of learning how to squat ass to grass with weight above your head, which is changing the center of gravity uh, of the lifted side in itself entirely. So as you see, the snatch up to my chest was not that great by any means. Uh, same way with the press. These are one things that I know that I can focus on and kind of improve on as I do lift more. But as you see, I'm not wearing any lifted heels, so these are barefoot, which changes the way that you can go ATG uh, in this position. Which, it takes me a long time to get into position to finally go down, but when I find that uh, kind of bar path and can execute that, I can replicate it for multiple reps. Which I find is way more beneficial than going up, increasing in weight, and having my technical form break down. Because this, this exercise in itself is a very compromisable uh, exercise one of your elbows or your shoulders uh, decides to fail or fumble, you will definitely be thrown off balance and that weight will be shifted. Uh, so you have to be very careful with executing these, but the benefits are them are uh, increased core strength and stability, as well as uh, going down into an ATG position, you find to use your biomechanics to their fullest capabilities. Uh, now, I think we are moving on to a uh, Steinborn front squat. Uh, these I've learned from Atlas Power Shrug on Instagram if you ever follow him or you see what he does He does a lot of old-time strongman movements, which I've always been kind of uh, Mesmerized by and how these old-time strongmen just did these uh, crazy wacky lifts and uh, They would be able to do a lot of weight too and figuring out how to do these lifts are kind of like a puzzle which If you're ever getting stale in gym or you're not feeling that fire anymore It kind of gives you a new goal to kind of progress in since you already have the base strength of doing the compound movements, I feel doing these more technical or uh, unconventional aspects of a, of a gym lift is uh, something that you can really progress towards and give you that little motivation or fire to do because who wouldn't want to Steinborn squat, Zercher squat, uh, Zercher deadlift like a bunch of weight and seeing a bunch of people look at you like, whoa, what is this guy doing, you know? Um, anyways, you can see that the Weight on my left hand side it has been shifted over because these clips that I was using were not very good. They decided to slide off as I was lifting the weight up for the Steinborn position. So after this set, I decided to go and grab some 2.5 uh, competition uh, clips that you used uh, in the gym. These ones held up a lot better, uh, and as I did that, I increased in weight with another 25 pounds. So this is going to be a 190 pound Steinborn front squat. Now this is, I will tell you guys, this is the second time that I have attempted this uh, lift in its entirety. This was the second day that I decided to uh, try and progress in this lift. Uh, as you can see, the aspect of getting into the right position is the most crucial part of the lift. Uh, once you get that position down, you're able to kind of descend in uh, the angled motion in which the bar came up in the first place. And then you just get into that ATG position, hold that core tight, and then you're off to the horses. You're off to the races now. So, anyways, this is going to be uh, another set of, I think, well over 10, 12 reps on the front squat. Uh, well, anyways, that'll be the end of the video. After this set, uh, I decided to kind of uh, wrap everything up and go home. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Leave a like and comment down below, uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and next time uh, I'll see you guys. Peace.